Thank you, Lorraine. Um, let me adjust this, because I'm a little taller than Lorraine. Can everybody hear me? Good. Uh, my name is Brent Boucher. Uh, I make my living building brands, and I'm very honored to be working with the Damon Runyon Foundation to help build theirs. Um, but I'm not here in that capacity today. Today I'm here not as a marketer, but actually as a consumer. Uh, you see, I actually benefited greatly from one of your products, something that came from the foundation. Today I'm actually Exhibit A. Um, 14 years ago, Dr. Jed Wolchuk, who's here today, and we'll talk about him in a minute more, he received a substantial grant from the Damon Runyon Foundation. They, you, took a chance on a young scientist in an area of treatment that was in its infancy then. It was called immunotherapy. And it had as many skeptics as it did fans, something that seems to be inherent in any truly breakthrough idea. Two years ago, my life changed when I was diagnosed with malignant melanoma. A tumor in my right shoulder was removed with clean margins, but I was told by everybody involved that there was an 80% chance of metastasis. Sure enough, a year later, the melanoma appeared in my upper right leg with a smaller spot in my lower left calf. This is about the time that I met Jed Wolchuk and his team at Memorial Sloan Kettering. And my life changed again, this time very much for the better. My timing was good. I'm gonna mispronounce every one of these drugs now. <laughs> Pembrolizumab, an immunotherapy drug, had recently been approved and Dr. Wolchuk was successfully treating patients with it. So I began 12 weeks of Pembro through IV every three weeks. Now I'm sure most of you in this room are very familiar with the possible side effects of immunotherapy, but the list goes a little like this. Fatigue, cough, shortness of breath, nausea, itching, rash, decreased appetite, constipation, diarrhea, headache, joint pain, et cetera, et cetera. When you hear that list, you're kind of like, wow. I had, however, a total of zero of those side effects, none. In fact, the toughest part of my Pembro treatment was the pinch of the needle for the IV. Nothing else. That was the good news. The less good news was the Pembro didn't work quite as well as Jed or I wanted it to. Twelve weeks later, the small spot in my left leg, the lower left leg, was gone, but the spot in my upper right leg was still there. Unchanged, not growing, but still there. So Jed decided that we would move to phase two this time in a trial, testing the efficacy of a combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab versus, I'm going to say just ipi, so two drugs versus one, uh, as follow-up to Pembro. I was on the single drug side of the trial, so I got just ipi. Again, 12 weeks, four doses through IV. Side effects, this time a total of one, itching. And I have to tell you that complaining about itching when you know that those around you are having real chemo, you just don't bring it up in the chemo suite. Okay, you kind of just let it go. Um, three months after that treatment began, CT and MRI scans showed that the spot in my upper leg was gone. Three months after that, the same scans looked like there had never been anything there, to quote Jed. Clean, perfect, cancer-free. Now it's interesting, uh, as an aside, because as a, as a patient, you, you kind of expect these things to happen, but I have to say that when Jed came in after that second scan with his team, he was like a kid on his birthday, right? He was like, it worked! And I'm kind of like, well, yeah, I, I was kind of hoping that would be the result. Um, but it, it's so great to see that enthusiasm for it. So it really was a miracle, but I would like to offer up the idea here that there were two miracles at play. The first, and certainly the most important, is the fact that that immunotherapy killed the cancer in my body. It made it vanish. But the second miracle, and perhaps a very close second, is the way the immunotherapy did its job. I missed a total of six days of work, and often those were half days. I would go to work in the morning, and I would have a treatment in the afternoon. Was I a bit tired the day after? Maybe, but that could have been psychological. I mean, just going in to get a treatment is, is kind of trying. But believe me, it's not like I'm made of steel or something. I'm a wuss, okay? I hate pain. I've always hated hospitals and needles and the smell of rubbing alcohol, the whole thing. But this treatment was not hard. It was not debilitating. It was not interruptive or a setback. 
And while those who are here might say, well, that's a nice to have, I would suggest maybe it's a must have, if it's at all possible. Because there's a simple thing. When you feel strong, you can be strong, right? It's much easier. When your life is not turned upside down by the cure, as I saw it was for many others going through other kinds of treatments, it's gotta be a lot easier to mentally fight the disease. When you feel okay, when you feel practically normal, being optimistic and forward thinking is very doable. It just comes naturally. And everyone I've ever talked to about cancer has told me that attitude is half the battle, at least. And now I say it too because I've lived it. So when people ask me how I've stayed so optimistic through all of this, my answer is the same. Immunotherapy is how I've stayed optimistic. My body was fighting the cancer in the same way it fights every other enemy, quietly and diligently, allowing my brain to focus on me living my life and making the most of my days. And my body was able to do that, to fight an enemy it never could before because of people like Jed Wolchuk, because of people like you in this room, people who believe in research, people who believe in trying new things, people who believe in giving funding to ideas even when there's a strong chance of failure. Because even in that failure, there is learning. And learning is the key to success. And that learning is the key to me standing here today. So that's my short remarks, but I want to say one thing. I'd like to ask Jed to stand up so I can embarrass him in front of an entire group of people. Because I'm told that giving a round of applause is what you do when someone saves your life. Thank you, Jed. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce this morning's keynote speaker. He's an internationally recognized researcher who's made fundamental contributions to our understanding of how cancer cells survive and replicate. His recent focus is on the role that metabolic changes play in the origin and progression of cancer. This has been explained to me as looking at the possibility of starving cancer cells. I can't tell you how much I like that idea, making the bastards suffer while getting rid of them at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President and CEO of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, Dr. Craig Thompson. <laughs> 